lubricate my lips. Ooh. Everyone needs a bit of good lubrication. Well, if they need lubrication, you're doing it wrong, love. <coughs> Not me. Sip, sip, sip. Lubricate. Lub okay. I'm I guess I'm doing it wrong. Oh, this is a show that we mean for you. For your mom and your dad and your auntie Sue. So grab yourself a coffee, it's a crack pimp dawn. And strap yourself in for a heat squad. Another Hibs Good Sunday morning, and yet again we're here to delight and entertain. And definitely inform, but it's the last day. It is! It's the last episode of Sex Pause 2017. The last episode of Sex Pause 2017. You guys might notice a line here. I haven't that? noticed that at all. Well, you need to notice it. Okay, why, why do I need to take it? in the studio today. Well, you're just gonna air our dirty laundry on here now. It needs to be said. Okay. <laughs> and apparently while well, I've been like on my deathbed with every kind of possible snot, cough, infection you could possibly have for the past however long, mm. um, Zeke's just been like hosting parties in here. This place looked like an absolute brothel. Da 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 da. Nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to come in, almost work up a sweat tidy this joint up and now I've decided you guys can't see this but his side of the desk is disgusting and P.S. I've worked in a lot of brothels they're not always filthy um yeah it, it's kind of piled up with a load of crap at the moment um, at the moment it kind of always is piled up with a load of crap it was <laughs> disgusting it was there was a bit of ash on the table and everything from it extra smelled like a, activities it smelled like a teenager's bedroom after he'd spilled his bong in there. Oh, well, definitely. I was, it was just missing the smell of dirty socks, I think. It wasn't missing. Uh, and I found weird I undergarments. He says they were his. I don't know. He needs a bigger bra if that's really his bra. Well, it's from that little sex video that from last week's episode, so I just forgot to take it out. Which I didn't know was happening. <laughs> just put it out there. I saw it But anyway, um, so Zeke, what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about um, the sex industry. We are. We're talking about sex work. And that will sum up our Sex Pause 2017. Yay! I've really enjoyed doing this series, but it'll be nice to go back to something a little it's bit more. It's been fun. Yeah. Um, it's been a lot of information, though, and I think that people are probably tired of it. So today's yeah. the last day. We'll give you some information on sex work and the sex industry and some misconceptions about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will move on to, like, I don't know, eating dog food or something's freezing our clothes or something. <laughs> something ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> So, but we've got a nice little reenactment at the end as well. We are, so. we are doing a reenactment today. Because um, you all love it so much. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to fly through this. Ow, my hair's really tangled. I did brush it at some point today. Alright, so we're going to jump through some quick definitions. Mm -hmm. So, when we speak about sex work, we're talking about what is commonly and ignorantly referred to as prostitution. Now, because I've been in the sex industry for so long, I know that prostitution is kind of derogatory. You know, yeah. sex workers yeah. don't like to be referred to as prostitutes. And after looking it up in Miriam Webster's 2017 brand new version, well, not brand new, six months old or whatever, um, I can see why. Because according to Webster, it's a dictionary, uh, a prostitute uh, or two prostitute, which I guess this, they're doing this as a verb, um, is to offer indiscriminately for sexual intercourse, especially for money. Now, I don't really know if indiscriminately needs to be in there because I know a lot of sex workers and I wouldn't say they're indiscriminate. No, you, you should have In fact, some, some of them can be class. downright picky. Yeah. Um, but it's their body. They could do with it what they choose. And then the definition of prostitution is the act or practice of engaging in promiscuous Sexual relations, especially for money. But if you want to do it for a lollipop, you're more... I like how they say, especially for money. Yeah, so it's not so promiscuous if, it, if you're doing it for a lollipop or something Well, I don't like know. Is it still as... Is it still... Why is promiscuous in there? I've got no idea. I think even the definition's a bit shamey. <laughs> so what's that about? And um, there's a couple more boring definitions I thought I'd go into, mm -hmm. so... 
especially when people talk about the legalization or the decriminalization of prostitution or, um, and lately, and that's how it's phrased in parliament and stuff, prostitution, um, lately it's a big thing with marijuana as well, decriminalization, yep. legalization. Now, I went down an absolute rabbit hole with this, like it was just so much conflicting information. So the actual definition of to decriminalize is to remove or reduce the criminal classification or status of, especially to repeal a strict ban on while keeping under some form of regulation. So what I, and I looked for other definitions of it in yeah. heaps of other places and use it in context and things like that. So basically to de decriminalize something is to reduce the charge that is applied to that particular act, but to still have a specific regulatory function over that specific act. Okay. Yeah. So, sex work. So, if de if sex work was illegal and or criminalized, and they've decriminalized it in a state, that means that while they have either reduced or completely negated the legal charge, you know, that is usually linked to a sex work charge but there is still a branch of legality that regulates that particular act. Whereas, yeah. if you were to legalize pr prostitution, sex work, it is treated like any other business. So there's not a specific branch of laws that refers to specifically sex work. Oh, okay. So All it becomes right. nothing. So once it's legalized, then it's just got no like it. being an accountant or something like that. Yeah. That being said, um, you look at all of the reforms and stuff like that, and the words decriminalize and legalize are thrown about higgledy piggledy. Mm -hmm. um, especially in the UK, I noticed a lot of reform stuff I read about the UK. They tend to interchange it a bit. Yeah. And use it in the opposite. But anyway, what else? What Just else? to make it really clear. I'm for not you. Webster. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you live under a rock, I'll just go through the basic kind of sex work that is commonly referred to. So mm -hmm. you have private, which is someone working from home on their own typically. Um, they may go out, they may see clients in-house, but private refers to someone working on their own, like a sole trader kind of. Okay, so no, uh, I'm gonna use only a dated term that I only know, so no um, pimp. <laughs> um, no pimp. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, pimps are illegal pretty much across the board in any country where it's legalized or decriminalized. Pimps are illegal mainly because uh, pimps tend to uh, force people into sex work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And take their money. Yeah. Um, without their, you know, se like the sex worker doesn't have a choice. So pimps are frowned upon. They're not good. Anyway. So that's private. You have an escort, um, which is someone that goes to a location. Yep. So it could be the client's home or a hotel or a function or whatever. Um, now, typically here people refer to brothels. Yeah, yep. Sometimes they're referred to, in reforms and laws and stuff, they're referred to as agencies or um, one of the states refers to it as a, a sex service premise. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, you're very legit. Some brothels do provide escort services for the ladies to go out and see a client. Yep. Um, but when you're speaking of a brothel, it is a place where clients come to to have their service, and mm -hmm. then they bugger off. Yep. And several, a couple or several or twelve or a hundred ladies work there. Um, then you have street work, which is basically a kind of like horrible stereotype. When people, road. Yeah, when people yeah. think of. Uh, sex workers, they tend to think of street walkers, so public soliciting, things like that. Yep. Um, and that is your main kind of outline of what there is. Private, yep. agency, escort, street work. So I thought we'd do is just go over, I don't know, a few countries that um, have legalized or decriminalized sex work in some way or fashion. Yep. Ironically, Australia is on this list. Um, but I'll go into the state to state information on Australia um, because it's considered legal or decriminalized in some parts of Australia, um, but Australia does it on a state to state basis. I'll go into that later. Um, I'll just touch on some of them. The, there's like 15 on the list, but I'll go over the ones that I think are interesting. So Austria is totally legal. 
So you don't even yeah. have to register as a sex worker or anything like that. It's just like working in a fish and chip shop. Um, in Bangladesh, sex work is legal as long as you're a female sex worker. But men can't be sex workers in Bangladesh. It's very criminalized. That's I odd. know. That's what I thought too. Um, but I went down enough rabbit holes so I didn't go down that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of common knowledge that it's totally legalized in Belgium. Um, so in Brazil, and a lot of places they've legalized it, but there are very specific laws. I'm sorry. They've, yeah, they've legalized sex work. But there's very specific laws that outline that there's no pimps. Like you can't, it's very legal to have a pimp. Yeah. So Brazil is one of those places. Now, Canada, in typical fashion, has done something really bizarre. So sex work has been legal in Canada for a long time. But in 2014, they did a reform where it's legal to do sex work. Like if you're a sex worker, it's legal to provide that service and accept money for it. Yeah. It is illegal to purchase a sexual service. So it's illegal for the client, but not for the sex worker. And it's been that way since 2014. So essentially what that's doing, like while on the books they look really progressive and say things like, oh, we've, you know, legalized or decriminalized sex work. Really what it is is it's creating an environment that's really unsafe for the sex workers because the clients, um, and it's a non-sustainable system as well because the clients don't feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, and so they have to kind of like duck around in dark alleys and do like car services and things like that. And it's really dangerous for the sex workers. So it's actually jeopardized their health and safety yeah. more than, you know, it was before. So again, Colombia, legal but no pimping. Uh, now there's some really cool countries like Denmark. It's legal, uh, sex work is totally legal, so much so that if you have a disability and say a sex worker would charge you extra because of specific tasks that were required because yeah. of your disability, whether you're in a wheelchair or something like that, the government supplements that, that extra bid. Yeah, so they like covered the gap. <laughs> wow! Yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, Ecuador has been totally legal for a very long time, but because it's totally legal and not regulated, there's been a huge rise in like forced sex work. Yeah. Um, so that's something that Ecuador is trying to address right now. France, a bit like Canada, a bit backwards, legal, however, uh, there's no public solicitation, so no like street walking and things yep, like that. Yep. No brothels and no pimps. So that means you can only work privately from your own home in France. Or well, I guess from a hotel, because you could escort. But, uh, um, yep, yep, but the yep. laws specifically say no public solicitation, no brothels, no pimps. In Germany, so Germany, Greece, and New Zealand, of all places, are actually what I think have the coolest system in place. It's totally legal. In Germany, it's been legal since 1927. Wow. I know, right? But it's so legal that sex workers have health benefits. They have... Uh, money that goes into their pension, or they're called social benefits in some countries. But Germany, Greece, and New Zealand all have it set up to where sex workers have all of the same benefits. They pay the same taxes as any other worker, which is the way it should be. Yeah, definitely. Um, and in Indonesia, it is so legal that there's not even any reference to it in any laws on any books. So, like, it's just like, oh, out of sight, out of mind. We don't talk about sex work in Indonesia. Uh-huh. Yep. Isn't that crazy? So, I thought that was kind of odd. So, those are just some of the, like, main countries that... And a lot of people think that, um, like, sex work is legal in Vegas, in the States. Um, but let me just tell you, don't be that schmuck that tries to pick up a sex worker in Las Vegas because it's actually not legal in Las Vegas. It's legal to advertise in Vegas, mm -hmm. but you have to be in like the next county over or something. That's why they have like the chicken ranch or something. Is that what it's called in Nevada? There's lots of places in Nevada, but not in Vegas. You have, they, they advertise everywhere. So on like all the signposts and stuff, there's little business cards with pictures of sex workers and stuff everywhere. It's totally legal to advertise in Vegas, but you can't actually sex work. You can't do any sex work in Vegas. Well, now we're planning on going on a um, trip to Nevada. In you and I are. Cool. Well, well, you can come to it if I you mean, want. I don't know Nevada's what I'm doing when I get there now. <laughs> You're not getting a sex worker in... Oh, well, you no, I, I think, in Vegas. I think, I think the ladies will disapprove anyway. So, I, I don't think I've got hope in hell. The ladies <laughs> that rule the roost. Now, I'm going to touch on the laws in Australia. Okay. Because we live in Australia, and there's a lot of misconceptions about the laws in Australia. I've read a lot of slippery slopes with these 
sex work laws, um, prostitution reform. And let me just tell you, the politicians in Australia, they are some slippery snakes. They have almost set these women up to fail. Well, not just yeah. women. It's not just women, but predominantly women. Um, but they have made it look like they're doing the right thing in some states, but it's so ambiguous that it's just like a trap. Isn't that kind of Australia as a whole, though? Don't we just try to do that? Let's stay away from politics! I, like, I have no opinion on Australian politics. Come on, Aussie, come on! You know, maybe just let's get married and stuff. Anyway, um, so these are in no particular order, but I started with ACT. So like I said, in Australia, it differs from state to state. There's no federal legis legislation that's not constantly in reform. So in the ACT, the part of the laws that govern it is the Prostitution Act of 1992. So it's legal to work privately at home, but you have to be alone. There can only be one person there, so you can't even like have a friend there that's got your back to make sure you're safe. They can, but they can't be a client, right? Because it'd be... Oh, no, you, you have a client. But otherwise, like, it'd just be the you know, self-masturbation. <laughs> Who are you going to charge for that? I don't know. You're an That's idiot. what I was wondering. <laughs> so the sex worker has to work privately from home. Um, you can work in brothels or agencies that are regulated. Yeah. Um, but there's no street work. Now, that's pretty straightforward. For, yeah. Um, a lot of... A lot of people, even a lot of sex workers, when you talk to them about uh, changing legisla legislation and reform and, you know, trying to decriminalize things, I can only speak on South Australia because I've only worked in the sex industry in South Australia, in Australia. Um, a lot of ladies that work, I haven't had a lot of exposure to male sex workers. I've only met a few and I can't recall having this conversation with them. So, but a lot of ladies, even the like really politically proactive ones, um, a lot of them feed into that stereotype against street work. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those situations where in order to get it legalized, it has to be, or decriminalized, it has to kind of be all or nothing. Yeah. Um, and it's like this weird, you know how like some minorities uh, like judge other minorities? It's one of those situations. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's one of those situations where you're like, well, I don't understand how you could, like, I don't, I don't see what good can come of judging other sex workers. Like, I just don't, yeah. I don't see the point of it. But anyway, that seems to be kind of a common thread is it's legal in some ways, but they've really negated street work. So, so like in WA, the Prostitution Act of 2000. Um, oh, they've updated it. Yeah. Because um, usually they all come from 92 or 97. If only <laughs> from 92 or 97. Just hold on to your hats, people. Um, so WA is one of those states that has very vague, kind of ambiguous rules. Yep. So you can work privately, one worker from home, but the limitations on that are quite vague. So basically it's kind of an unsafe environment to work privately. Even though they say it's legal, there's so many loopholes in the reform. Same with brothels. now. Brothels or agencies aren't covered by this Prostitution Act of 2000. They're covered by a Section 190 of a criminal something or whatever. So those laws are totally separate. And those laws are like pages and pages and pages of different weird stipulations and stuff like that. That I don't think very many people would be informed enough on ref the criminal code to be totally informed and be safe. Yeah. And street work's illegal. But I think in WA, they've set it up to where they're like, oh, we, we're forward thinking, we've decriminalized it or whatever. And it's kind of a trap. Like, they yeah. kind of make it impossible. In WA, they set people up, right? Yeah. And Victoria is very much the same. A lot of people are under the conception that, are under the perception that you can go to Victoria, like Melbourne and stuff, and it's legal. I know a lot of sex workers that have gone to work in Melbourne. Yeah. Mostly Melbourne. Um, street work, it's not legal, but the regulatory system of licensing in Melbourne is so impossible that there's only a small percentage of sex workers that qualify and that get approved for their licensing and stuff like that, and same for the agencies and brothels and things like that, that this small percentage is 
you know, protected and safe and doing everything legally, but then the majority of sex workers, um, they've set it up to where they, they, they don't really have any safe options to work except for to break the law and, you know, fly in and fly out and stuff like that. So, again, that's one of those states that they're like, oh, we've decriminalized it. We've got this really forward-thinking system, yeah. and it's not at all. Now, I've heard a bit recently about this fly-in, fly-out. Is that a, quite a common thing for, mm -hmm. for sex workers to fly yeah, in? Yeah, in Australia, um, it is, because um, you have places like, so like places that have less restrictive laws than like South Australia, which that'll be the last place we talk about. Yeah. Um, and so... Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but recently they've had this huge crackdown on brothels in South Australia, and they're shutting all the brothels down, and um, which, whatever, anyways, they, they're shutting them down. So there's not really anywhere for, you know, sex workers to go to work mm -hmm. safely. A lot of ladies don't like to work privately because you have that kind of, like, safety net if you're working in an agency, or even if you're doing escorting, you know, you have someone you check in with when once you're there yeah, and you're yeah. safe and stuff like that. There's a system in place. So working at home privately, not only you're alone, um, because a lot of people don't necessarily want their friends to know that they're sex workers. So it's yeah. not like they're going to invite friends over to watch their back or whatever. But also your clients know where you live. So, I mean, while I'd love to paint this picture that, you know, clients of sex workers are all really great top blokes, they're not because... There's that would be generalizing, you know. Not yeah. all sex workers are really great chicks or dudes either, you know. Mm. It's not all people above six foot are really nice, you know. It's just it's the laws of averages, really. So you're going to get some nasty pasties, and you don't really want them knowing where you live mm. because yeah. you can't really keep that separation. So I know a lot of ladies that don't feel comfortable working privately, so they fly to places that they can work legally. Or I know that some people go seasonally, like they'll go to like the I know there's a couple of mining towns that uh, have like specific contacts that you can go and you're only allowed to have only allowed to have a certain amount of people working at the time in that area or whatever because mining towns don't have a huge population of females. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know people that do it kind of like they follow the weather. So I know people that go to like Darwin and stuff like that when it gets a bit yucky here. Um, so yeah, I also know people that have totally... Um, mundane, run-of-the-mill, you know, single mom kind of lives in Adelaide, but then, you know, fortnightly, they go away for four days and work, and it's enough to, you know, support their household or whatever, yep. um, and they don't run the risk of running into someone they know. Mm -hmm. So, because there's a lot of anonymity, see an enemy, anonymity that needs to go with sex work. Um, so, let's see here, where did we leave off? Victoria, Tasmania, Sex Industry Offenses Act of 2005. You can work one to two people privately. So, like, you and a mate can work there, but no more yeah. than two. You can only have two people there, workers. Um, you can work in a hotel or a residence, but brothels are still criminalized in agencies. Um, New South Wales, in my opinion, New South Wales has the best system at the moment. Because they have a model of decriminalization since 1995, um, and they address that a little bit later. I'll um, we'll put a couple of links up to a couple of websites if you are interested in sex work. Some people you can contact, um, and if you want to read through the actual laws and reform so that you have your ass covered. But in New South Wales, workers, you know, you have to be 18 and up. But they even have laws like protecting clients as well. So like the age of consent in New South Wales is 16. Mm -hmm. So you can see someone privately if you're 16, but you can't be found on in a premise, like in a premises if you're 16. You have so to you be have 18, to 18 and up plus, yeah, yeah. to go to like an escort agency or a brothel or something like that. Yeah. Um, you can work on the street. You can even do, um, you know, public solicitation. So you can work on the street. Yep. You just can't be near or within view now, I don't know if that means you can't see it. I don't really know how they regulate that, but you can't be um, near or within view of a school, a church, a hospital, which I didn't really understand that one. I don't necessarily even understand the church, to be quite honest. I don't understand a church either, but I'm just skimming over the fact that a lot of laws are still based on Christianity. Cause yeah, I don't, yeah. I'm just not even going to touch that with a broomstick. <laughs> um, so, uh, school, church... Uh, hospital, because, you know, sick 
people don't know about sex, um, and a dwelling. So uh, like a so you couldn't just be walking down the street in like your suburban neighborhood or whatever. So I don't really know where you're supposed to work. Yeah, because um, it couldn't really anywhere be considered a dwelling. No, no, actually, it can't be connected to a business. So there are laws okay. that define what a dwelling is, okay. actually. All right, cool. um, and brothels are regulated like any other business. So you just have to have your, you know, ABN or whatever. Yep. Um, and there, there are not sex work specific laws that regulate brothels separately from another business. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So like it's... Yeah, so they're just treated like any other business. So like, you know, Star Force doesn't come in and like, oh, you know, rough people up, which happens in South Australia. Well, not anymore because they're all shut down. Um, Northern Territory is currently under reform as of like June of 2017. Uh, so, oh, so really recently. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm up to date, mate. Up yeah, to date. very up to date. <laughs> um, so street work's illegal, brothels are illegal, you can work privately at home, and you can escort with a certificate, but because it's under reform, it didn't really go into the certification you need. I think it's your health clearance to escort. I think. Okay. All right. I, th I think. I don't know. Northern Territory people, let me know if I'm wrong. Um, Queensland's another one of those. It's like a totally slippery slope. So the two main states that you think that sex work's legal in, you've got Victoria and Queensland. Yep. I mean, in New South Wales, but that place is, they're all right. They're doing what they can um, in this podunk country. Um, but like Queensland, so you can work privately, but you can't have a driver. So forget having somebody get you there or make sure you're out on time or you're safe. Yeah. Um, you can't have a receptionist and you can't even do a double booking. So if you have a client that would like to see two girls at once, I couldn't imagine somebody would like to see two girls at once. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't do that because that's considered no longer soul trading. So that, I think <laughs> what, that's a even if they're individual sole traders. Uh, yep, yeah, no, because that is considered a business. So I don't know. Okay. Um, so you um, brothels and escort agencies are have very specific licensing. Yeah. So there's a lot of hoops that you have to jump through. You can't even two girls can't rent a house or a studio apartment or whatever, even if one of them is there from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and the other one waits till she leaves and then goes 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. If they never see each other, they're both working out of one location, and so they could go to jail for that. It's illegal. Um, and a brothel, so an agency, can't do escorts. Okay. So you can, I think you can privately escort, and there might even be escort agencies, but they can't do in-house bookings. Mm -hmm. But if you do in-house bookings, you can't do call-outs, you can't do escorts. So it's again, it's one of those like, uh, let's see which yeah. law we're gonna peg you with today. Yeah. <laughs> so no loopholes at all. <laughs> no, but and there's no sign of that being reformed anytime soon. Yeah. But speaking of reform, South Australia, hey. South Australia, mate, it is a disgrace. So all sex work is criminalized in South Australia. Yeah. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. We all know that it does, but it's all totally illegal and has been. Since basically 1953. Yeah. That was the last time they reformed any laws. There were some laws that date back as far as 1935. So come on, guys. Come on. That's Surely you have some kind of social media that you've seen that there's reform, a big call for sex work reform. This is why. In South Australia, nothing has changed since the mid-30s. Uh, that seems stupid. Did they used to measure just... swimsuits in the mid-30s? I yeah. feel like they did. Yeah. Ooh, a little bit of your kneecap showing. <laughs> slap. Like, I just, I don't get it. Now, I've heard um, that even though it is, you know, it's not decriminalised, it's not legal in South Australia, that they uh, they somewhat turn a blind eye to it. I can only speak from my own experience, so I think that sex work helps society in general because I think it keeps your average kind of lady jogging in the evening, I think to a certain extent it keeps them a bit safer because it allows people that have certain inclinations 
to kind of at least role play those inclinations mm -hmm. with a professional yeah. instead of fulfilling those urges in a violent or traumatic way yep. to someone yep. that would be a victim. Yep. Um, I think that I've met a lot of men who were recently widowed um, that really benefited from sex work because if you've been with someone for 60 years or whatever, you know, just because you see a sex worker doesn't necessarily mean that you're having penetrative yeah. P yeah. and V sex, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like, it, it's also about affection and tenderness and things like that. Sometimes it's just someone to talk to. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I think it's, um, I think it's really good to have around because as we discussed in last week's episode mm. as well, when it comes to things like you said, role playing with whether it be pedophilia or um, even yeah, the taboos, the taboos or yeah. rape play or anything like yeah. that. It is. It's better than them going out and finding somebody that isn't consenting. Mm. Um, so and I know, and, I, and a lot of people argue that if you're um, if you're inclined to be a rapist, that it's not a sexual thing; it's a power thing. Yeah. Um, and that if you're if you're if that's your inclination, if you if you're a rapist, then seeing a sex worker and role playing that kind of scenario isn't going to kind of quench that thirst. But if you if you have the inkling of an inclination or something like mm -hmm. that, instead of going out and having too much to drink um, and misreading someone's signals, and you've already kind of got this thought in the back of your mind. Now, I'm not saying that you know single-handedly sex workers are reducing the amount of rape. I just think that as a whole, they provide us, I think sex workers provide a service. Like you look at people with disabilities. Yeah. You know, I know lots of sex workers and I know people with disabilities that see sex workers that are trained specifically to deal with people with certain disabilities. Yeah. You know, and you look at people that are like socially inept, you know, like people that may have social anxiety or people that are raised in super religious households that don't necessarily know how to speak to the opposite sex or same sex, you know, you have women that are 40 and have never been with a woman and they find themselves divorced and yep. they've always kind of fancied ladies or... Or are, are out le less, less attractive people? Is that... Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to put this nicely. Yeah. Like less, the less attractive... The people that, yeah, the people that aren't, don't fit into those societal beauty kind of norms that may have a hard time picking up because let's face it, people are getting more and more shallow. Yep. Um, thanks to the computer, you know. Um, what else you got? You've got your... You've got people that are busy. You know, you've got your career-minded people that just can't be bothered yep. dating and they just want to get their rocks off and they're mm -hmm. sick of Rosie and the Bishop or whatever. I don't really, <laughs> Rosie and the yeah. Bishop, I like yeah. it. Um, you know, there's all kinds of... You have people that are, come from cultures that you're not supposed to have sex until you're married, but that's a lot of pressure, especially yeah. if you're going into an arranged marriage. Yep. Could you imagine... Well, I couldn't imagine going into an arranged marriage and having to have sex with someone for the rest of your natural life, but having never had sex with anybody. And that means the other person hasn't had sex with anybody either. Theory, You're going to be two people just feeling around going, I've got no idea. <laughs> poking eyes and making a mess. and Yeah, no, not a good nah, idea. It's, it's so <laughs> I just think that there's so many different things that sex workers do for people in general. You know, you have your retirees, you have... your you, you know, you have your people, not just your widows, but, you know, there's plenty of people out there whose spouses are unwell, you yeah. know, <coughs> like, pardon me, you know, there, I, I have met, I, well, one man specifically, uh, his wife had dementia, mm -hmm. and she didn't know him from a bar of soap, and they'd been together for like 70 years or something, he did, he, I, I don't honestly know if he could still function or not, but that doesn't mean that he stops yearning for that kind of affection and yep. it would be totally inappropriate and traumatic for his wife who thinks he's a total stranger, mm -hmm. you know, to try to talk her or persuade her into doing something like that. So I, I just think so, sex work is good. Sex work yes, is definitely. good. Sex yep. workers are good. They provide a service. It's just like making your dinner. It's just like it's just a job. Mm -hmm. It's just a job. And it really provides a lot of different benefits to the general public, um, to individuals. And if you're intrigued by sex work or you are thinking about getting into sex work, not in South Australia because it's illegal, <laughs> has been since 1935, da, 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 da. Um, 
If you are in South Australia and you would like some more information about uh, the laws in South Australia or you would just like to be in contact with people or you want to know who to write a letter to because you're outraged by the fact that the laws are the same since the 30s, um, you can contact SIN. Um, they are the South Australian Sex Industry Network. Yep. Um, I have gotten that wrong a lot of times. Um, and they're just at www.sin.org.au. That one right there. Ta -da -da. Um, and they do all kinds of stuff. Um, Sin uh, likes to uh, take the power away from words like whore and things like that. So they have, you know, uh, the you know Red Umbrella Day and stuff like that. And sex workers come out and they, it's like the the whore parade and stuff like that. They really, yeah. they do heaps of stuff. Bing, sex bingo. Um, you can just go and play bingo, have a cuppa. Um, you know, it's not just like a raunchy orgy. Like, Sin is really cool. They provide information on STDs. They can put you in touch with a, um, a sex industry clinic because there's a couple of clinics that are well known and they focus on sex work and things like that. Yep, yep. Um, and I try to always get my... STD checks there. Not that I've needed one for a very long time. Oh, I went, I went to one of them only a few weeks ago. Oh, did you? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Use them. Use them. Use them. Um, they can teach you about, you know, prophylaxis and, you know, protecting yourself and all kinds of stuff. They can teach you about your rights. So SIN's a really good resource. Um, and if you are interstate or you want even more information, um, the Scarlet Alliance uh, is really good for that kind of stuff. So that's the Australian Sex Workers Association. They're at www.scarletalliance1t I don't know why I keep saying that. I must have spelled it wrong several times. <laughs> anyway, scarletalliance.org.au They have a really comprehensive outline of the laws and how they apply to each little tiny minute detail in each state. Yep. So if you're thinking about going to work interstate or if you have friends that work interstate and you feel like they're not informed, you can do that. Or if you just want to go see somebody, you know, going on a weekend trip and you're like, oh, I'm headed to New South Wales. Why? Who knows? But anyways, yeah. headed to New South Wales, I fancy a route. Um, you know your law, you know your your rights and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. that's it. Sex work. Write a letter. Vote. You know, go sit on the steps at Parliament House. Make it legal. You know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's the world's oldest profession, and it's still not illegal. Uh, it's still not legal everywhere. It is literally the most natural thing a human can do is yeah. have sex. Literally. It is what got us here in the first place. Yeah. So just seriously, Australia, get on board. So backwards. And South Australia is the most backwards of all of it. Just be loud about it. I feel like I'm saying this a lot. Australia, get your shit together. Embrace your sluttiness. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being promiscuous. Nothing at all. There's nothing wrong with paying your bills. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get laid. Yes, so definitely. So if you've gotten anything from Sex Pause 2017, is sex is good, consensual, definitely. protected, do it as much as you can. Safe, sane, consensual. Stay tuned for... <laughs> Reenactments. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no, wait! We're close That's why we gotta do the thing! Yeah. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share our features at your slutty little fingertips. They're so slutty. So slutty and promiscuous. I, I don't know what to do for this one. Uh, another. Eh, 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 something like that. <laughs> 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 Oh, yes. This is just a little bit over the top. Was it? What was oh, the last just, one? Oh, uh, fair enough. Good <laughs> call. All right, so we are going to um, we, we are gonna do a reenactment now. Oh, we're just all over the place today, aren't we? We are. I'm like, bye, no, don't go, reenactment. <laughs> all right, we're, we're doing a reenactment. And um, what are we doing a reenactment of this week? Um, dun, dun, dun. Oh, wait, I can't do that legally, can I? Oh, uh, do you know what? Um, here's your reenactments. <laughs> Okay. All right. So what 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 are we what are we doing for um? Shit, shit, shit. What are we doing for what? What are we doing for reenactments this week? Are you filming this? Part? Yeah, yeah, I'm filming. Oh, this we're doing um a scene from a famous scene from Pretty Woman. Uh, very appropriate. Look, yeah, not not the ideal um kind of role model for uh, the sex industry, but a classic. Yeah, very much a classic. Outdated, but a classic. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. Hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you all next week. See you next week. Bye. Do I look okay? Mm.
Hmm? Well, something's missing. Well, nothing else is going to fit into this dress, I tell you that. Maybe something in this box. Oh, this box. Now don't get too excited, it's just on loan. 